Supposing that four people sit down to play bridge, and one, the odd man out, sits in a chair by the fire, at the end of the evening the man by the fire is found dead. One of the four, while he is dummy, has gone over and killed him, and intent on the play of the hand the other three have not noticed. Ah, there would be a crime for you. Which of the four was it? With this passage from the ABC murders, Agatha Christie foreshadowed one of the greatest Poirot stories of all time. So how exactly did its film adaptation manage to fuck it up? Cards on the Table was the 13th Poirot novel, published in 1936. It's been adapted three times for film and TV, four if you count the first episode of the third season of Death in Paradise. We're going to focus on the 2006 entry in the series Agatha Christie's Poirot, starring David Suchet. Eccentric art collector Mr. Shaitana invites Poirot to dinner, along with three other investigators, so to speak, from other Agatha Christie stories, Superintendent Battle, who at that point had appeared in two novels, The Secret of Chimneys and its standalone sequel, The Seven Dials Mystery, Colonel Race of the British Secret Service, who had appeared in The Man in the Brown Suit, and crime fiction writer Ariadne Oliver, who had assisted Parker Pine in one of his stories. This was her first appearance in a Poirot novel. There are also four other guests, Dr. Roberts, Mrs. Lorimer, Major Despar, and Anne Meredith. After dinner, Shaitana splits his guest into two groups of four, and each group goes to a different room to play bridge. When the four investigators finish their last game, they go to the room where the other guests are still playing, and Shaitana is sitting by the fire. They're shocked to discover he's dead, stabbed with a jeweled dagger from among his curios. One of the bridge players has killed him, and the other three never noticed. The film starts off pretty faithfully. In the opening scene, Shaitana tells Poirot he collects people who commit murder, and it's hard to tell whether or not he's being serious. But when we get to his dinner party, there are a couple major differences. Colonel Race has become Colonel Hughes, and Superintendent Battle has been replaced by Superintendent Wheeler. A bit of a disappointment for an Agatha Christie buff like me, but is this what ruined the adaptation? No. Granted, it was a missed opportunity, but these new characters serve the story just as well as their book counterparts. Based on what Shaitana said to Poirot, the four sleuths form a theory that the other four guests are all murderers. If you're familiar with the later Agatha Christie novel, And Then There Were None, you'll see some parallels here. Somehow, unwittingly or otherwise, Shaitana must have tipped one of them off that he knew their dark secret, so on the spur of the moment, they murdered him. The sleuths go to work unearthing secrets from the four suspects' pasts. There's no hard evidence to be had, but they learn enough to reconstruct likely occurrences. Dr. Roberts, it seems, had a dalliance with one of his patients, Mrs. Craddock, whose husband threatened to destroy the doctor's career. Both husband and wife died shortly thereafter, from different diseases. It's unclear how Roberts infected the husband, but he could have contaminated a needle when he gave Mrs. Craddock an inoculation. With Major Despar, there's clearer evidence. Records show he guided a man named Professor Luxmore and his wife through Africa. Luxmore was said to have died of fever, but Poirot tricks Mrs. Luxmore into admitting she and Despar had fallen in love. She says her husband attacked Despar, who shot him in self-defense. Anne Meredith could have tricked her former employer, Mrs. Benson, into drinking poison, but there seems to be no motive. However, Poirot has a hunch and does an experiment, proving Anne is a kleptomaniac. Mrs. Benson caught her stealing, so Anne killed her out of fear. In the course of events, a sweet friendship develops between Mrs. Oliver and Anne's roommate, Rhoda Dawes. Rhoda is convinced Anne is innocent and goes out of her way to try to prove it, and unwittingly provides information that incriminates her. After the events of Cards on the Table, Rhoda and Mrs. Oliver must stay friends because they both figure prominently in another novel, without Poirot, 25 years later. A love triangle seems to form between Anne, Rhoda, and Major Despar, who offers to help Anne retain a solicitor. In the end, Despar confesses to Poirot that he did shoot Professor Luxmore, but it was a genuine accident. There was no unspoken attraction, except in Mrs. Luxmore's imagination. Poirot says he believes him. 
The only suspect who seems to have a clean record is Mrs. Lorimer. However, she summons Poirot to her home and, to his surprise, confesses to the crime. She says Shaitana made a certain remark that tipped her off that he knew she'd murdered her husband. Although it was a risk, she killed Shaitana at the first opportunity. But since then, she's learned that she's terminally ill. Before dying, she wants to free the other three suspects of suspicion, Anne Meredith in particular. Poirot refuses to believe Mrs. Lorimer could have committed murder without premeditation, as doing so would be out of character for her. He realizes she's confessing to protect the real murderer, Anne, whom she witnessed killing Shaitana. The next day, Mrs. Lorimer dies in her sleep, apparently by suicide, but Poirot doesn't think so. Anne Meredith had visited her after Poirot left. He, Battle, and Major Despar find Anne just in time to see her attempt to drown Rhoda. Both of them end up in the water, and Despar tries to rescue them. He saves Rhoda, but Anne doesn't make it. This is what I would consider the structural break between Act 2 and Act 3, but in this case, I'm going to keep going to the end before I turn back to the film. With only a few pages left in the book, it seems like we've reached the solution. Anne Meredith was the murderer. But then Poirot turns it around and accuses Dr. Roberts. Poirot had examined the bridge score sheets, figuring that the reason no one witnessed the murder was that the particular game they were playing was exciting and needed their concentration. According to the score sheets, that would have been the third game, and Poirot deduces that during that game, Dr. Roberts was dummy, the person not needed at the table, and so could walk about the room. Also, the way Roberts played Bridge matched both his past murders and the murder of Shaitana. Bold, audacious bluff. He committed those murders right in front of people, albeit without their knowing. Roberts was afraid of the police discovering his past crimes, unaware that they already had, so he decided to make Mrs. Lorimer his scapegoat. He faked her suicide and wrote a false confession, forging her handwriting, again, unaware she'd already confessed. Poirot tricks Roberts into thinking there was an eyewitness to his last crime, and the doctor gives up. As a writer, I can understand the temptation, when adapting a story for the screen, to add in one or two extra twists, just as a treat for people who are familiar with the story. As long as you know what you're doing, and you don't go overboard, you can probably get away with it. After all, it's not really your story you're telling, you're more a translator in this context. And sometimes it's okay for a translator to add their own dramatic flavor, if the true meaning still gets across. Whatever the expression is for 17 steps beyond overboard, that's what happened with this film. Early on, the adaptation is more faithful than most. Some dialogue is taken from the book word for word, though... I enjoy the occasional little variances in what characters say and do, like when Mrs. Lorimer puts Superintendent Wheeler in his place and Mrs. Oliver is impressed. That's in character. Then it starts playing around with the suspect's backstories. Instead of fever, Professor Luxmore experimented with psychotropic drugs. When Despar shot him, it was to protect Mrs. Luxmore. This doesn't change the plot too much, but personally I think Christie's original version is more inspired. After the murder, Shaitana's home is broken into and ransacked. From this, Poirot makes the intuitive leap that Shaitana possesses secret photographs and goes to his studio to find them. The photographs are of Superintendent Wheeler, because of course four suspects aren't enough. Wheeler could have stabbed Shaitana right before he discovered the body. Mrs. Lorimer, who is no longer terminally ill, makes a false confession, as she did in the book, to protect Anne. Except now, Anne is her estranged daughter. Not only that, it turns out Anne did not commit murder. Like with Major Despar, Shaitana mistook her for a killer. Despite Poirot's assertion in the book that Shaitana might possibly have made a mistake with the four murderers he collected, but no more than one, definitely. So who killed Mrs. Benson? Well, Mrs. Benson is now established to be Rhoda's aunt. It's not specified why Rhoda killed her, though it was probably for money. Rhoda allowed Anne to believe it was her fault through an accident so that Rhoda could manipulate her, keep her as a slave. When Anne determines to run off and marry Major Despar, Rhoda tries to kill her. It's Rhoda who drowns instead of Anne. This far into the film, despite the vast number of changes, I was prepared to let it go and not be a querulous purist. 
Then we get to Act 3. In the book, Poirot regards Shaitana as, in his words, merely a stupid man. In the film, Shaitana is elevated into a kind of challenger or rival for Poirot. The glass that Shaitana was holding contains a sleeping drug, suggesting that someone rendered him unconscious before stabbing him. However, Poirot eventually concludes that Shaitana drugged himself. Shaitana staged all of this in order to goad someone into murdering him. In spite of Book Poirot stating that Shaitana would never have committed suicide, Film Poirot says he was tired of life, and to him this would be the ultimate thrill. Putting aside the fact that this is incredibly hard to swallow, how did Poirot figure this out? Well, it was because of something Shaitana said off-screen, which we're now allowed to see in a flashback. Oh, wait, that's, that's absurd. Oh, yes, the writer is an imbecile. But there's more. It turns out Dr. Robert's backstory has been changed, too. He did not have an affair with Mrs. Craddock. He had an affair with Mr. Craddock, and is still having it. Mrs. Craddock is the one who threatened his medical career. But how did Poirot figure this out? How did he figure out that Dr. Roberts was gay? What was the clue that tipped him off? It was the fact that Dr. Roberts didn't hit on his secretary. That was the proof that he was homosexual. Not just something other than heterosexual, but definitely homosexual. The fact that he didn't make inappropriate advances on his female co-worker. I really hope I don't have to explain why this is messed up. As you know, I'm open to loose adaptations, but in my opinion, a movie has to decide whether to tell its own story and still acknowledge its source material, or to tell the original story in the way it was meant to be told. There are plenty of examples of Christie adaptations where they made drastic changes to characters, settings, or events without altering the core story arc, and for the most part, the end product shines. Cards on the Table seems to be trying to be both the same as and different from the book, and the result is a senseless mess. Although I can't recommend this Poirot movie, I do recommend coming back for my next video, where I'll be covering Sleeping Murder, with a special guest. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.